Behind me is the trailhead for Gator Hook Trail in Big Cypress National Preserve. I found out about this trail yesterday by going to one of the visitor centers, which we always tell you to do, and talking to the rangers. And one of them suggested this is her favorite trail and it might be passable at this time of year. It's late March, which means it's the end of the dry season here in this part of Southern Florida. And the wet season is getting ready to kick off. The wet season down here is seriously wet. From what I understand, through the summer and fall, about 50 inches of rain is not uncommon every year. And that's why this swampland is a swamp. So the Gator Hook Trail is about five miles total. It's two and a half in, two and a half out. And when you look at all trails, a lot of people will tell you, I made it at the first mile and then I couldn't get any further, or I made it a mile and a half, couldn't get any further. And I could absolutely see that because there are so many places where it's dry now, or it's kind of that sucking mud that you're walking through, but you could see where some rainfall would completely obliterate the trail and it would be really hard to go in there. Uh, and I know some people say they'll only go in there a certain times a year. You, you basically have to wear boots and waders in order to do it. So I was willing to try it today. There were still some water crossings. Uh, there was quite a bit of mud, but I pushed through. I was really proud I did. I made it to the end of the trail, made it all the way back out and saw some really amazing things in terms of the, the big cypress trees, uh, just different flora and fauna of the swamp and just getting to experience this part of the preserve. If you saw our last video, you know that I'm exploring South Central Florida by myself right now. Jesse had to hang back with good solid cell service for some work stuff that she had to take care of. And I have a little more flexibility. So when I'm in a place where I don't have cell service all the time. That's not a problem. I'm exploring to see if there are areas that we should come back to. Jesse and I could come down here if there's cell service and we could work while we're here. Or if not, do we take some vacation days and explore. The Big Cypress National Preserve is something that I think Jesse would love. I think a lot of you would enjoy it. And it is a place where if you don't have cell service all the time and you don't need it, uh, get down here because you're going to have a great time. It is a really interesting place. It has a really interesting history. Apparently, back in the mid-1960s, somebody had a brilliant idea that they were going to build an airport in this area. So they actually started plans and construction of a runway for what was going to be, at the time, the largest jet port in the world and it was going to have the longest runway in the world. So they built the original runway and this was about 1968. A lot of people came together and said, no, we're not going to have that happen to this area. So you had folks that don't always get along. You had the environmentalists, the conservationists, the hunters, the fishers, the off-road vehicle users, airboat drivers, Native Americans, they all came together and said, we have to stop this. We have to preserve this area for what we have come to love about it. And they were able to do it. They got the government involved. Uh, this is just north of Everglades National Park, and that was formed in 1947. And people didn't really want another national park up against Everglades. And the folks who wanted to preserve this area didn't want a national park. They thought it would come with too many restrictions. So they said, what can we do? What kind of compromise can we do to preserve the land as it is, but still allow people to use it for the recreation and fishing and hunting that they've come to love it for? And what they came up with was a national preserve. And Big Cypress National Preserve was created in 1974. It was the nation's first national preserve. So it's a great example of how people can come together, compromise on what they want to do and what they want to accomplish. And they've been able to save three quarters of a million acres of land that would have otherwise completely been destroyed. Because once this giant airport went in, there was plans of, of developing the area and, and stretching all the way to Naples and possibly making Naples the next Miami was kind of the concept. So that would have been horrendous. This is so much more amazing to see what's out here now and to enjoy it. Gator Hook that I took this morning is just one of many, many trails in the preserve. This is one of the more difficult ones. There's some that are much easier to do. Get here, get to the visitor center, check out the map, see what you're up for, and try to get out and really enjoy uh, walking into the swamp and seeing the big cypress trees and you know maybe being lucky like me this morning I'm pretty sure I heard an alligator bellow and and I understand from the rangers that this is the time of year when they're starting to get active and you're going to hear the males start to bellow so they can attract their mates so that was just really cool I didn't see much wildlife I saw some birds 
uh, and lots of lizards. It's funny because when you first get to a place like this, you start noticing lizards. You're like, oh, a lizard, a lizard. And, and then after a while, you're kind of like, oh, look, a lizard. And then later it's, hey, little dude, get out of my way. I don't want to step on you. So there's just so many lizards here. But that's just an example of, of what you find when you're in a place like this and, and you kind of get to really enjoy what is here. There are several places you can camp in the National Preserve. I've stayed the last couple of nights at Midway Campground, which was a really nice, quiet campground. There's, uh, you know, I think about 30 or 40 sites. Some of them are set aside for tents. The rest have RV hookups in terms of electricity. Uh, they have 20, 30, and 50 amp service. And they have nice level sites. They're paved. Um, there's another campground down the road, Monument Lake, that's a bit smaller. And it's really interesting. I don't know how they sort of design these and plan these. But at Midway Campground, you have paved roads. You have paved sites that are nice and level. Uh, you have running water in the bathroom, but it's cold only in the sinks and there's flush toilets, but there are no showers. At Monument Lake, it's all dirt. It's dirt and gravel that you're gonna be parking on for your site. There's no electricity, but they have a big cell tower nearby. So they have much better cellular service and their bathroom apparently has showers, sinks and toilets. And so it's I don't know, more developed in some ways and less developed in others. It's just really interesting to, to think about what designers were thinking when they put all this together. It has been really neat to explore this whole area of South Central Florida. I'm gonna insist with Jesse that we come back down here somehow, whether it's while we are working or if we can grab some vacation time, I'd really like to show her some of this. This whole area of the state has been preserved. You have the Big Cypress National Preserve that I've been in for a couple of days. As I mentioned, to the south is Everglades National Park. Uh, to the northwest is the Florida Panther National Wildlife Preserve. Uh, to the due west, there is a state preserve and there is a state park. So the governments of all levels have come together to kind of save this area. And there's just so much exploration that you can do here, uh, whether it's by hiking or biking. There are um, ORV trails everywhere. There are airboat trails. Uh, there's a, a swamp buggy that you can book here and, and they'll take you out so you can explore the swamp if you're not interested in, in getting out, maybe getting those boots wet. Uh, you can go and, and take that. They do uh, guided paddle tours. It's just designed for people who want to get out and explore the real Florida. As I've mentioned before, Florida State Parks, their motto is the real Florida. And you do get a taste of that when you're in some of the state parks. You get to a national preserve like Big Cypress and you can really see what was here. And that's even with a lot of the logging that went on. And there are some fields and prairies that are open in the preserve because they were cut down either for logging, the big cypress trees were, uh, or it was cleared for agriculture that's not there anymore. But what they've been able to preserve really gives you an indication of what Florida was like when you know, the first peoples came through here and, and would have seen them. So it is something to behold. It is something to enjoy. It is something to treasure. So do get down here if you can, check it out, do what you can to keep it clean, protect it, take care of it. Let's make sure that future generations can always come down to this part of Florida and see what the real Florida really was and, and really should be for well into the future. Keep on trekking and we'll see you out there.